So we filmed most of this episode at the beginning of this year, prior to when COVID uh, had us pause production due to it being COVID. <laughs> So we weren't able to finish the episode the way that we normally do. So you'll notice scenes like this filmed in the Highlander. We're practicing social distancing. Quesadilla. Are you excited for quesadillas? I am excited for quesadillas. I think quesadillas are an all-time great food. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you get into your disposition on quesadillas greatness. Is it worth it? Make it worth it. Make it worth it. Worth it. Today on Worth It, we're going to be trying three quesadillas at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. So Andrew, when you hear the word quesadilla, what happens in your brain? Melty cheese in my mouth, unrelenting deliciousness. Very poignant. Unrelenting deliciousness. I don't know what other foods fall in that category. Where's our first stop? We're going to Tacos 1986. Joy and Victor are gonna show us their quesadilla adobada. Spoiler alert, it's on a corn tortilla, which I've never had before. Tacos 1986, what kind of taco shop are you guys? We're a Tijuana-based taqueria. I think we're representing carne asada and, and adobada from Tijuana. Every taqueria down there has those two tacos. Where does 1986 come from? That was the year we were born. I moved here about 10 years ago. I was missing that style of, of taco, that style of execution, and that's pretty much what sparked the whole thing. My dream is to see five, 10-year-olds eating our quesadillas and being like, this is authentic. This is a real quesadilla. You said uh, a real quesadilla. I think I know what a quesadilla is, but My I probably brother, don't. Have you had our quesadilla? I have not. I'm about to change your life. It all starts in the handmade tortilla. We got the finest uh, tortilla lady, Leticia. We'll start off with that. We completely stay away from drizzling cheese on top. We like to melt the cheese first on the griddle so it's nice and crispy. Then we slap the tortilla on top and then we flip it over. You have a nice layer of crispy cheese. And the marinade. In the northern region of Mexico, we call it adobada. Down south, is known as al pastor. It's a rub that is used in the streets of Tijuana to kind of preserve meat that we make with chilies, garlic. We put strawberries in, really? in ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. My goal was to make the most delicious one ever. I think we accomplished. I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People walk in here all the time and they're like, is this the uh, al pastor? I'll get an al pastor. And we're like, yeah, it's basically the same concept. It's just a different flavor. In our house, a taco is a handmade tortilla with your tortilla choice of protein, which can be beef, chicken, mushroom, or pork. You want cheese on your taco, that's a quesadilla. It's not a taco anymore. So we get that a lot. And they all come with onion, cilantro, salsa, guacamole, unless you specify otherwise. Two quesadillas right here. Thank you so much. Please enjoy. Cheers. Oh my god. Whoa. Not what I expected at all. I mean, I guess I've been eating quesadillas wrong my I, entire I, life. I for sure have. I think my expectation was I'm gonna bite and just taste a layer of oozing cheese. Right. However, in this quesadilla, it's oozing meat. Pork is so delicious. It's very rich and meaty. Smoky. And just with the cheese and everything else, ugh. And the tortilla is just it's the right suppleness, but togetherness right. to hold all this together. Wow, you ate yours very quickly. I think we should get more. Really? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. What is the perfect order here? Taco and a quesadilla and a and molita. A molita like... and, then a, and then a secret item that you don't know of yet. What? And it's a flour quesadilla. Flour tortilla with melted cheese. The choice of meat. My preference is the carne asada. I want everything on it. Onion, cilantro, guacamole, salsa. And we top it up with a little bit of beans. Beans. Hi. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Beans, baby. Cheers. Mmm. Call it. Call it. Game over. First of all, that meat is delicious. Yes. Second of all, this whole thing is smacking. I don't know how else <laughs> to say it. This is just all the slapping that's happened today. It actually tastes luxurious yeah. with the beans. Should we eat more? <laughs> what? We went from quesadilla to the secret menu. I say we go back to the beginning. Just have some tacos. Keep it going. The heavens are now bathing my taco in light. Mm, bury me here. Andrew O'Nicky, 1990 to 1986. <laughs> so Tacos 1986 was amazing. I appreciate his uh, level of care to those details, even to plating it in such a unique way. It feels like a mic drop, but it's like a mic drop for every time you serve a dish. Quesadilla fat! I'm just yelling in my bedroom right now. In Mexico City, 
It is not uncommon for cheese to be just an optional ingredient for a quesadilla. What? Cheese wow. optional? How does that, but it's named after cheese. What? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like those um, protein style burgers at In-N-Out. Bun optional. For those who, who don't know, can you explain that to people? Protein style is when they give you the burger patty in a lettuce wrap. But really a burger is kind of defined by the bun. This is wild. All right, so next up is an old friend of ours. And yes, I'll call I'm a friend. Uh, we're gonna go see Roy Choi at Koki Takaria to eat their kimchi quesadilla. So you might recall we did a takeout episode where we visited the Kogi truck. And in that episode, Adam actually ate the kimchi quesadilla. So the very same quesadilla, but this time we're getting it from the brick and mortar Kogi location. Now I wind up back here. I think I recognize this road. Kogi is a food truck that started about a little over a decade ago. You know, a lot of people have dubbed it Korean and Mexican, but it's really LA. It's not Korea the country or Mexico the country. It's us like weird mutant kids that were born from our parents who came from those countries. So this food is actually from Los Angeles. We have four different type of tacos, and then those all turn into a burrito, and then those all turn into a quesadilla. <laughs> so we're, we're like a Russian doll of tacos. The kimchi quesadilla was actually our family meal. And we were just sitting there, you know, waiting for people to order food. And so I just started messing around making stuff. We take the kimchi and we caramelize the kimchi, almost like a jam. We crisp the whole quesadilla up, kind of like a pizza. And we take that and we cut that in four slices, shingle them down, and then we make a salsa roja. Very similar to like a Neapolitan pizza, right? Very simple ingredients, very simple construction, but there's like an alchemy and a moment in those 90 seconds that you pull it out, right? So it seems as though sometimes people don't treat quesadillas with the same love as they do a taco. And I feel like you gotta treat a quesadilla as if it was a taco. So you have have to make sure that every single bite is a cohesive bite and you got to treat it right with a really good salsa. First stop, kimchi quesadilla. It smells very, when you get home and your mom's cooking and you're just like trying to guess what that is, but then it's like three different dishes at once. That yeah. smell and it's like the kimchi and the cheese. We have our slices shingled here. Would you like the first shingle? I would. You know one thing I noticed about the interview with Roy? He kind of talked about the food as if it was like a living being. I understand why. This is melting in my hand. Cheers, Steven. Mmm. <laughs> That was really great, and my first instinct was Andrew's gonna love this. I really love it. It's interesting, it does have the consistency of a Neapolitan pizza. You sense the crispiness, but it still has this like moist droop to it. Mm -hmm. There's something about the creation of this quesadilla that is a little intangible. I don't know what it is. I think it's that pizza moment magic mm. that Roy was talking about, mm -hmm. when the quesadilla is just crispy and melty enough. It is also the dichotomy of, mom well, using big words today. It's the dichotomy of the two weird characters, cheese, and kimchi meat, uh -huh. like the unlikely duo in a buddy cop film. Yeah, Adam unfortunately couldn't join us for this particular shoot, so we're gonna have our stand-in sound operator. Take a bite of this last quesadilla. Mike, come on in here. Yeah, that was amazing. I think we've pointed this out before in the show, but I just love how there are cities that have given birth to combinations of foods that you would not expect to see. Really surprising and delicious. So for our final stop in our quesadilla journey, we're seeing Chef Ocho at All Flavor No Grease for the triple threat. I'm very excited. All Flavor No Grease got started from a dream, actually. I was tired of selling weed, I'm not going to front, and I'm like, Lord, I need something else better to do with my life. A small voice actually came to me and was like, do what you learned how to do in school. The only thing I learned how to do in school was sell candy and make friends. And I was a heavy set guy, I didn't have all the nice clothes, but I knew how to be a bubbly person. So I opened up a candy house in the front of my mom's home. About three months later, a friend of mine was like, you should start selling tacos. That was said one Friday, that Tuesday I tried it. It was a success, I sold out. Just started going crazy after that. Man. I would describe my quesadillas as an Americanized Mexican dish because I'll never take away from the culture. You feel me? I've been brought up and raised around Hispanics basically my whole life. And the quesadilla was not only a vision that I had, but wasn't nobody taking off with the quesadilla. One day I'm cooking up my little tacos and stuff. My friends still came through to support, but yet still talk to those smack, you know, still shoot the fat joke. They were irritating me so much. I was like, you guys need to shut up. That was the exact cut look, everything that I seen in my dream. So then 
then I thought outside the box. Let's start using steak. We'll keep the chicken, but now let's get a little bit more fancy. Let's use some shrimp too. And we have a cold marinade that we put on there that actually turns the shrimp a nice bright orange color. And I'm like, okay, this will be the triple threat with all three proteins. We try to use all the regular fats and the oils from the meat so we don't have to add any. And that's how we stick to the all flavor, no grease concept. The triple threat is for a first time customer because that's gonna be flavors coming from every different angle. I'm happy that I do cut it at eight to 10 pieces. That way you don't have to pick up a big hamburger for him. You could just oh, just buy one little long rectangular piece. People ask all the time like, why does it taste so good? Cause I put love in there. It's yeah. a little salt and pepper, but you know, a lot of love in it. I say all the charisma and the whole style of all flavor, no grease came from me being me. And when I was able to finally come out of that shell like that, I was embraced by so much love that I didn't even know I had from people. All right, you guys hungry? I'm, I'm starved. You better be, because we got the triple threat. First observation, the shrimp is, looks like it's, out of, it's from out of this world. It's, yeah. it's fluorescent red. I honestly, I thought it was a tomato at first. I thought it was a pepper. <laughs> Let's do a little shrimp taste. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. It looks like a firework of sauce. Like the different zigs and zags going in opposite directions. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Shrimp and the beef and the chicken. It makes for like a lot of different flavors that happen in one bite. You know that chart like neutral, what is it? Like neutral good? Like the character creation chart yeah. for, for Dungeons and Dragons. So where are you putting this? I think I would say Chaotic is for sure. I think it's good. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I absolutely think it's good. It's a very heroic flavor. You know, because it's chopped up in these slices, it's kind of more like eating a great plate of nachos. Every bite is that last cheesiest corner piece right. where everything is loaded in there. You know, the whole quesadilla is that. It has the same tantalizing effect as like french fries. Like when you have 10 of something, you're like, oh man, I can't wait to chow down on a box of fries. The flavor lives up to the moniker triple threat. Mm. So it's the end of our Woo! quesadilla journey. So Andrew, which quesadilla was the most worth it to you guys given price point? I think I'm gonna go with all flavor, no grease. And the triple threat is that unrelenting deliciousness that I'm after. I can't reiterate how amazing of an episode this was to do in Los Angeles. I, got, I guess I gotta go Kogi Taqueria. I mean, I can't, I can't believe I'm saying that. Adam, what's your worth it winner? Tacos 1986. Okay, well that does it for the Quesadilla episode. Thank you for joining us on this delightful trek into quesadillas. Next week, we have a very fun episode that is something that we've never done before. So for our season finale, we're actually doing two high-end restaurants head to head. It's gonna be wild. Yeah.